And we are back. That's a good way to start it. Miss Yui let out a lethargic groan, perhaps in response to my quiet murmurings. At my wit's end, I grabbed hold of her and did my best to carry her into the back room. Gently willing her over to the unfurled futon, I then carefully laid her down, making sure I didn't drop her in the process. Then there was a matter of rebuttoning those pesky pajamas again. I hesitantly pulled up her pajama bottoms and brushed away the stray hairs that were plastered to her brow with sweat. I'd done my best to avoid seeing anything I shouldn't, but I am a guy, so my heart was pounding the whole time. Miss Yui's pajamas were soaked through with sweat. She really might have been better off with a change of clothes altogether. But no, that would have been going way too... Yeah, yeah, that most certainly would not have been a good idea. Noticing a convenience store bag carelessly tossed to the floor, I glanced inside. I don't even know what cold packs are. I mean, I assume they're bags of coldness. Is it that thing on her head? I like. Do people actually use those? Because I've never seen somebody actually use something like that before when they're sick. I placed one of the compresses on her forehead and pulled the covers over her. Oi, thank you. Miss Yui appears almost instantly relieved. She exhaled contentedly, and her breathing became more relaxed. Finally, she was asleep. <sighs> Even in sleep, Miss Yui seemed to be suffering. Mone. <laughs> That cat looks weird. I, I don't know what it is about it, it just looks weird. Something about the neck. Monet had coiled up in my legs without me noticing. I began absent mindedly speaking to him. He muted in response, and our conversation ended there, as my gaze was still affixed squarely on Miss Yui. Sate. あの、It's amazing how much better the audio quality is compared to my PSP. She wasn't in any condition to respond. But Miss Yui's hand had slipped out from under the futon and was gently grasping my pant leg. Oh, no. Her grip was much weaker than before, but I knew I'd probably regret it if I went home now. Miss Yui just seemed really lonely. Without disturbing Miss Yui's hold on me, I took a seat beside her. For the time being, I figured I'd watch over her and make sure her, her condition didn't worsen. Occasionally, Miss Yui's breathing could become ragged, would become ragged, and she'd furrow her brow. She was in a pretty bad way. Wasn't there anything else I could do? I glanced quietly down the hallway. I'd noticed when I carried Miss Yui here that the kitchen near the entrance was perfectly neat and tidy. There wasn't any indication it had been used that day at all. <coughs> Monet's gaze shifted suddenly. I followed it and saw pet bowls laid out in the corner of the room. One dish was filled to the brim with water, and the other was piled high with dry cat food. Man, his bowl was actually... it actually had food in it. My cat, if, if you put any amount of food in his bowl, he's gonna eat all of it. I shook my head at the whole situation and glanced down at Monet, who was tilting his head as if trying to understand me. I broke into a wry smile. When I'd pulled out the 
cold packs. I did notice some cheap convenience store food in the bag as well. I guess that was going to be your food for the day. Not exactly the best stuff to eat when you're sick. Is there f food that's supposed to be good for you while you're sick? Because I just eat whatever. Her face was bright red and her half pained, half contented noises provided me with no clear cut answer to my question. Monet's cries help assuage my guilt over entering a woman's apartment and borrowing her kitchen. Not that I had any reason to feel guilty. I don't think, anyway. I mean, circumstances were what they were. Still, I had this nagging sense that I should have somehow felt bad about what I was doing. One by one, I gently peeled off each of the fingers latched onto my pant leg. The expression on her face changed as I was doing so, from contented rest to mild annoyance, but there was nothing to indicate she might wake up. Yes. As I stood up, Man Monet mewed happily and began tagging along at my heels. And Miss Yui, now resting by herself in the bedroom, let out a sudden sneeze. Maybe I should have left that for a second more. ちょっと I want to know what her friends look like. I don't want. I don't care about their names. I want to know what they look like. But we never see them. Thank you. まったく。それで、えっと、何の話だっけ。あ、そうそう。だからさ、とうとう3年になっちゃったよねって話。ああ。だね。あと1年で卒業か。卒業もだけど、私たちそれよりもっと考えなくちゃいけないことがあるじ
and be one of the people I didn't like. Kisaragi Academy, five years ago. The cherry blossoms were in boom, boom, in bloom, and the rustling wind carried with it the soft warmth of the season. I was a high school senior now, and was devoting myself to my studies in preparation for the day my dream could become reality. And that dream was to become an English teacher. I wonder if that's supposed to say Japanese teacher and, you know, the Japanese version of the game. My grades were on the fence for getting into the university I wanted, though. So my best bet was to score a special recommendation from the academy. あの日の放課後。このまま頑張れば推薦してやるぞ。だって、なんかやる気出てきちゃった。この調子で頑張らないとね。と、それにしてもゴミ箱ってどうしてこんなに重たいんだろう。ゴミ捨て場まで持っていくのも一苦労だ
I got something I can talk about. You guys want to hear me talk about Halo? No, no, probably not. Never mind. Bad idea. Most of the times I'd seen Tsukasa before this were in the school courtyard. He spent a lot of time there, sitting alone on a bench. Um, thank you. Even after school or during summer vacation, if I happened to pass by, I would always see him there. And after this little encounter, we go on to make many fond memories together. Yet somehow, the image of Tsukasa that stands out most in my mind is of him seated alone on that courtyard bench. Hi, Daza. コーヒー牛乳でよかった。まあ、何でもいいけど。サンキュー。これは私からのお礼なんだから黙って受け取ってくれればいいの。ギリがたいやつ。We <laughs> walked to the bench together, sat down, began making small talk. That courtyard bench was a sort of mystical place. <clears throat> I'm assuming this says the leaves. Yes. The leaves rustled over your head, and if you closed your eyes and opened your ears, it felt as though you were in the middle of some forest. Then if you looked straight up, the sunlight poured through the leaves, and you almost felt like you were in another world. だよな。あ。だからなのえこの時間とか昼休みとかよくここにいるでしょ。ああ。この場所好きなんだね。まあね。そっか。The leaves rustles a, rustled as a gentle breeze blew between us. We were both silent for a bit, but strangely, it didn't feel awkward or uncomfortable. ほかに何か理由があったりするのないよ。お、オッケー。んじゃあ聞く必要ないじゃない。エグザクトリ。そうだけど、ほら、普通聞くだろ一人でそんなんつまらなくないかとか、意味わかんねえとか、変わってるな
私を振り返るコーヒーをおごってもらったしなついでに教室まで運んでやるよえいいのあ,あ<笑>ありがとうあ私のクラスはね4組だろ知ってるよシシドユイっつったら有名だからなえどうして今から先生みたいな女子がいるって12クラス全部で有名だよ Be right back. Stupid pointless phone calls. それから私と司君は何度か中庭で会っては話をしたあまたお前コーヒー牛乳かよカフェオレ My French is a bit rusty. Even though I did take French for like nine years, I don't really remember it. But lay is milk, right? I, I think lay is milk.、Mm. But I don't quite remember. What, why do you sound surprised? I, even I can see it in this. I don't even have to remove that to see it. そんなことを言ったら私だって司君がここのベンチに座ってるのいつも見てたよ。Yeah, you're both creepers. いや、知ってるけど、なんえっと、お互い気になってたんだなって思ったから。おんなんだそりゃ。中庭での会話は、たわいのないものがほとんどだった。教室で友達と繰り広げる会話みたいに。あまり中身がなくてでもこの場所夏でも結構涼しいね夏とか言うなあれ夏嫌い夏季講習が目前に迫ってたら誰でも嫌いになるだろう<笑>まあね私たち3年生だもんね夏だからって遊んではいられないよねお前はずいぶんと楽しそうだけどな私は夢に近づいてるって実感できて嬉しいよ私ね人に勉強を教えるのも好きなんだ頼られるのも好きなんでお姉さんになった感じがするからかなほら、私一人っ子だしああうんまあ頑張ればうーわすっごいどうでもよさそう<笑>だって人ごとだしなそんなことを言いながらも司くんはやっぱり優しかっただって私の夢を笑ったりはしなかったから I don't know what boorishness means. 先生になりたいって夢を話すと大抵の人は笑ったり茶化したりであまり真剣に聞いてくれないだけど司くんは一度も笑わなかったんだ、well, you say you be an The season was quickly turning to autumn <laughs> After the school day ended the senior floor was always a lot more quiet than its underclassmen counterparts Everyone was off studying hard at the library or with tutors. So one day, thinking no one else was around, I sat down in a lonely corner of the hallway. Initially, I had grabbed my shoes and left the classroom, intending to head home, but along the way, I just started crying. I was overwhelmed. My sobs echoed from one end of the hallway to the other. けれどいつもなら手放しで喜んでくれるその子が
ふと表情を曇らせた私の前でそんなこと言うんだまだ私は夢も何も決まってないのに多分私はひどくショックを受けた顔になっていたのだと思う巴はすぐにハッとしたように目を見開き慌てて謝ってくれただから私も笑って気にしてないよってそう言ったのだけれど<笑>気にしてないわけがない巴の言葉と表情が鋭い針のようになって私の胸をつく Well, if you don't want people to get mad at you for it, don't bring it up. Well, if you brag about it, then yeah, probably. <laughs> I kept wiping the tears from my eyes, only for new ones to take their place immediately. Why didn't I think of this sooner? So many people were still facing uncertain futures with no real goals in mind, and I was completely oblivious to it. I was the one with a dream, running around like the cock of the walk and babbling about my successes and aspirations. I wouldn't blame them if they hated me. This is the second time in this series that they've used cock of the walk, and I have never seen it used outside of this series before. Like, it's such a weird phrase. Did someone that insensitive to the feelings of so many other people really become a teacher? Did I even have what it takes to begin with? Shishido? Koe o kakerare te frimukuto, soko ni wa tsukasa kun ga tatte ita. Itsumo wa roka de atte mo kotoba o kawas koto nante nai no ni. Kono hi wa goku shizen ni koe o kakete kureta. Tsukasa kun. Sugoi kao da zo. Hankachi wa? ぼってるじゃあ顔拭けよつかさくんが戸惑っている空気がひしひしと伝わってきた彼を困らせたくなかったから私はこぼれ落ちていこうとする涙を必死に拭う何かあったのか<笑>何もないよ Text. Text. You got this.、Uh, almost there we go. Good boy. Nanika, Attakara, so Nani Night in the room. Korewa. So no. Tomodachito, just a Kimazuka chat. Misunderstanding? Is that the right word to use for that? The, I, I don't know. It doesn't seem like it was really a misunderstanding. Demo, Suguni Nakanori Stakara, Daijov. <laughs> これはさあそう嬉し涙みたいなものだからあ嬉し涙って言えばね私推薦枠に入れることになっ Not sure if I did it out of respect for Tsukasa or because I wanted to change the subject but I cut myself off mid sentence I was doing it again What was I thinking? Now even Tsukasa was going to hate me for being a braggart Hell I hated myself I was the worst, just the worst. But. <laughs> He was really happy for me? A bit taken aback, I nodded firmly. だからなんで泣くんだよ<笑><笑>まだ推薦枠が決まったってだけで推薦入試があるんだろう<笑>嬉し泣きするほど喜ぶにはまだ早いだろう<笑>そうだよね<笑>でもそうやっておめでとうって言ってもらえたから<笑>たくごめんね何が泣いたりしてわけわかんないよねそ
こう思ってんだろ早く泣きやめって<笑>もう大丈夫だからたく You know, if I said if you don't know why you're crying, just stop, then I would probably get yelled at. As I rubbed my swollen eyes, a smile broke through, and Tsukasa let out an exasperated sigh. Then, as if suddenly remembering something, his eyes lit up. Tsukasa ran into his classroom, quickly, quickly reappearing in the hall again just moments later. He was holding something. お前にこれやるよ鉛筆 In his outstretched hand rested a short, stubby little pencil, not the sort of thing you'd expect someone to go out of their way to lend you. It was poked, poked here and there with small scratches, but it still seemed to be in relatively decent shape considering how obviously well worn it was. 受験必勝鉛筆受験必勝これ使うと試験に受かるんだよえー、本当にああ木更木学園に受かるのは難しいって言われてた俺がこれ使って受かったんだから間違いないよじゃあこれ司くんが高校入試の時に使った鉛筆なんだそう経験あらたかな鉛筆だぜ霊言あらたかね<笑>あ、それだ<笑>うんそれじゃあ借りるねありがとう言っとくけど貸すのは推薦入試までだからな一般入試の時は俺が使うから返してもらううんだから推薦絶対受かれよを受け取り笑顔でうなずく今度は司くんも笑ってくれた What does this say? Oh, that's right. The items don't have descriptions in this game. Whoops. Oh, what, what, what do I have set to circle? Uh oh. Um. Zero? Yes. 人の気持ちまで勝手に思いやってしょい込んで悲しみまで自分のものにして。お前みたいなのが先生になれたらいいのにな。For a moment, I had no idea what he was talking about, but then it hit me. Chikasa had somehow sussed out from our conversation that I was crying because I'd upset Tomoe, and he was turning that fact around to offer me encouragement. 頑張れよ。負けんなよ。頑張れって言葉は辛い時にはプレッシャーになるから言っちゃダメ。ってよく聞く。That's interesting. けれど私はこの優しい言葉が大好きだった。私、頑張るね、司君。お、oh. この日から私はどんどん司君に惹かれていった。彼は全然そっけなくて。ちとも振り向いてはくれなかったけれど。I can still clearly recall recall the events of that day even now. It was October, the day before my entrance exam. The weather outside had been miserable since morning, and visibility was all but non-existent. And the text lags a lot and is really annoying. It would be a bad omen if I were to slip and fall on the day before the exam, so I decided I'd wear boots to school just to be safe. Hello there. Lovely day we're having. When I opened the door, I was shocked to see a white haired old woman lying on the ground, soaked to the bone. <gasps>
I like how the rain sound effect works perfectly fine, but the music doesn't work. That's that's awesome. The road running by my house was narrow and mostly used only by our neighbors. But it's not like it was closed off to outside traffic or anything, so hit and run wasn't out of the question. I looked over the old woman's body as best as I could. Fortunately, there were no signs of any serious in injury. I don't like the voice actor for the old lady. Just, just gonna point that out. The old woman raised herself up slightly and spoke hoarsely. From the tone in her voice, she seemed terribly desperate. They let them practice for inter interviews at their school? My school didn't do that. My school was like, huh, well, we're going to teach you a whole bunch of useless stuff. おばちゃん、どうしたの?お家の人は。どうしてもか。え？どうしても行くというのか。うん。ならば、せめて。not knowing what to say, I nodded apprehensively as the old woman began digging through her pockets. She produced what looked like a, to be a crumpled scrap of paper. As she was digging around, I noticed that her breathing had become dangerously ragged, and began considering my options to assist her. Really, I should have gone back into the house and called my mom. Hmm? Come on, Tex. Thank you. But there was something about her that kept me glued to the spot. I sensed desperation hiding in that unbroken gaze. <laughs> The old woman clutched, clutched my wrist and forcefully pressed the scrap of paper into my palm. Tilting my head, I unfolded the scrap and looked carefully at it. At first, I thought I'd just been handed a piece of trash. That's, that's supposed to say, yeah, there we go. But when I unfolded it all the way, I saw that it was actually a paper doll in the shape of a human being. Thanks for the gift, just what I always wanted. And there was a name written on its torso. Come on, it says Yui Shishido. There we go. Yes, my name, written plain as day in easily legible brush strokes. So maybe, since she knows your name, you should listen to her and not go to school today. <laughs> Crazy, this was all crazy. I didn't understand any of it, save for one simple fact. This old woman is here specifically to give me this strange paper charm, so maybe I should listen to her. As far as I was aware, we were total strangers to one another, but she clearly knew both my name and my address, so maybe I should listen to her. You idiot. Just put it in your pocket. As I extended my arm to return the paper doll, I could sense her entire demeanor had changed. She raised her body up unsteadily from the wet asphalt. <laughs> because Miss Yui is really stupid, that's why. Why is 
って誰もわしの言うことを聞かんのじゃとらぬなら絶対に天神賞に行ってはなやん天神賞そうじゃ行くな行くな As the old woman cried out, the paper doll fluttered lightly to the ground. You dumbass. Almost instantaneously, it became soaked through with rainwater. My name began to run and quickly turned into an illegible black smudge. Seeing this, the old woman grabbed and tore at her hair. <laughs> No way to go, idiot. You long enough. Do you know? You know, my dear, I don't want to tell it. You can say, you know, what the paramedics arrived in a matter of minutes. The old woman seemed to be unconscious by that point, however, so the EMTs brought out a stretch. What are you are? Conoka no concasia, this car? Yeah, you know, my dear, told it. I know the QQ show you on this. そうですかでは付き添いで乗車はされませんか Thank you. Oh. Ooh, boy, I can't make what that one says. The idea of making this Yeah, wow, I got that. The idea of making this old woman go to the hospital by herself just seemed like it would have been a shameful thing to do. Sure, she was a stranger, but we'd had a lengthy conversation mere minutes before, so I couldn't very well say we had nothing to do with one another. It's like the old woman called. It's like the old woman collapsed knowing Miss Yui would want to go with her instead of going to school. I was a little hesitant, but I knew I really had to go to school today no matter what. So I left the strange woman in my mom's care and heading towards school walked right by her stretcher. Suddenly a hand rose from the limp form of the old woman and grabbed my skirt. Startled, I tried to jump away, but found myself ensnared by her terrible bloodshot eyes. <laughs> so stupid, Miss Yui. And that is going to be all for this part. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.